Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over five tips and tricks to speed up your editing workflow and maybe make your edits cooler inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. The first tip is to always utilize as many hotkeys as possible. I'm sure you know plenty of hotkeys, however let's talk about the ones you may not know. If you hold down Control and Shift, this will allow you to drag and move clips around your timeline without deleting other clips, essentially letting you swap them. Or, if you hold down Control shift and use comma and period, you can manually just move a clip between your timeline by ripple editing, so you're not destroying any clips around it. If you need to trim something quicker, move your playhead to wherever you want to make the cut, and you hold down Control shift again, and this time you use the bracket keys to trim a clip whatever length you want to. So let's say I want to trim the end of the clip, Control shift and right bracket, and there we go. Now I just trimmed it to a shorter length. Probably one of my most used hotkeys of all time is adding transitions. All you have to do is select where you want to add transition, control T, and it will add a crossfade at that point. And that makes it easy. I don't have to go into the effects and search for it. Another big hotkey that I use is B. If you press B, it will simply switch to the blade tool. However, if you press control B, it will make a cut right where your playhead is. So now I can rearrange these and move these new clips that I have just cut. Moving on to our second tip right now is time remapping. Time remapping is a vital tool that every video editor should use and DaVinci has some amazing tools to utilize it. Click Ctrl or Command R to bring up your retime controls on your selected clip. If you go ahead and just drag from the middle here, it's going to cut and trim just like it normally would any other clip. However, if you move your cursor to the top half of your clip here and drag from there, as you can see, it is retiming and rescaling the speed of the clip now. So if we play it, it's going to be really much faster than before, and I can speed it up all the way to 500%. If I drag my playhead to a specific point in the footage, I can click on this little drop down arrow here and click add speed point, and it will add a keyframe for our speed points. So let's change this now to uh, maybe 800 and see how fast that looks. That makes a really cool little ramp into our island, but I want to move it. Grabbing the upper handle here will stretch the surrounding frames and slow it down, but if I grab the lower handle here, it's simply going to move the keyframe. That way this stays at 800% and this stays at 100%. So it's going to give more time to the 800% speed. Finally, to smooth out our keyframes, let's select our clip, right click, and go to Retime Curve. After opening up our Retime Curve, we can select that keyframe that we made and change it to a smooth keyframe and we can stretch out our little handles there so it becomes really smooth and play that through and now we have a nice little ramp into the island that comes to a slower speed in the end. The third tip is on keyframing. As a video editor and especially if you're doing things like music videos or special effects you're going to be messing with keyframes all the time. You can easily create keyframes by creating one in the inspector, moving forward a little bit, and then changing the value that you keyframed. And we've created a simple zoom. If you want to visualize those keyframes, you click on this little button in the timeline, and there is your keyframes. However, for open effects keyframes, that's a little different. If I keyframe anything under the effects tab, you'll notice that when I add those keyframes, they don't actually show up when I press the little keyframe button. I can't even open it, in fact. They only show up under the curves editor, which is right here. And now I can select from this drop down menu whatever uh, aspect that I want to keyframe, such as my motion scale and speed scale. However, this can be a little bit clumbersome. So, my tip for you is in some circumstances, add these effects in the color tab. Here I have the exact same clip in the color tab, however I'm going to go to the effects, search for my camera shape, and drag it on. And this time, when I go ahead and keyframe, let's go to the start right here, let's keyframe all of these as zero, go a few frames forward, I want it to shake when that bulk flies by, let's get that all the way up, speed scale a little bit slower, and then tone it down. You'll notice that if I have my keyframe editor open, which is right here, now you have a different way to visualize the keyframes. And this is a lot easier and a little less cumbersome than having to work in the timeline like you did before. Now I can go ahead and extend and move my keyframes however I wish with ease. 
All right, on to the fourth tip. And the fourth tip is using power bins. If you don't know about these, they are a time saver in DaVinci Resolve. Go over to view and go down to show power bins. As you can see, it's gonna show up in your media pool. Now, power bins are essentially media, but they are available in all of your projects within a given database. Now, I find this really useful with my asset library where I keep a ton of overlays, uh, lens flares, and other assets that I use with a ton of projects. And if you wanna expand your library of effects, head on over to cinepacks.com and use the code SAMPLE15 to get 15% off your order. Or simply try out any of our free effects packs available on the website. Once you have all your clips selected, just drag them in here. If you drag them here, it's going to condense and take all the clips out of the folders. If you drag them right here, it's going to keep your folder structures, which that's what I wanna do. There you go, and just like that, your power bin is available in every single DaVinci project within your database. The only downside to using power bins is they have to manually be uploaded, so every time you add a new asset or new packs, you have to drag that into the power bin by yourself. All right, the fifth and final tip of today is changing settings of clips before you drag them into your timeline. So I'm sure you know you can change your preferences up in your preferences under the user tab here. You can go to uh, the editing tab and change plenty of things. For example, the standard still duration. Five seconds is a little bit long for me, so I like to set that down to something like three seconds. So whenever I drag clips onto my timeline, now they are only three seconds long instead of five seconds. But you can save more time than that. As you can see, there's black borders around many of our uh, photos here, and they don't really match up with our timeline. So before you even drag them into the timeline, select all your clips, and you can edit all of these attributes in the media pool before they even touch the timeline. So I can change the scaling to uh, fill, for example. So now as I drag these in and as I wor start working with them, I don't have to worry about changing the cropping on them. And I can even preview them properly in the media pool browser. If you find a weird circumstance where you need to, you can even change the transform, the rotation angles, and edit all of these things in the media pool before they touch the timeline. Let's also say, for example, you have a few clips that you know you're doing a ton of re-timing with, and you wanna change the retime process to something like optical flow without changing the entire project settings, there you go. Now these selected clips will automatically come in with optical flow, and if I wanna stretch out the length of these, now the read time process is matched with optical flow. All right, and that just about sums up the five tips for DaVinci Resolve. If you guys like this video, make sure to drop a comment, a like, and share this video so others can learn from it. If you guys wanna support the channel, make sure to subscribe for more content like this, and as usual, check out the Cinepacks website for plenty of free effects, packs, and assets for your video editing. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Have a great day and good luck editing. Bye.